Today, we've got more geography now. We've got Malaysia this time. Really excited to learn more about Malaysia and check out a little bit more because I, I don't really know too much, if I'm honest. This video is going to be a really interesting one. Let's jump straight into this one, man. Well, here we go. Ever since I made the Indonesia episode, you have no idea how many Malaysians were like, okay, now that you did our cousins episode, do not mess with ours. Oh, don't worry, Malaysia. And here to reassure you, I made you some nasi goreng. Ooh. Ooh, don't know what that is, but it's food. <laughs> Ooh. Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. How refreshing. We are back in Southeast Asia, and today, after Brunei, East Timor, Indonesia, we are doing the last country in the Nusantara Archipelago, Malaysia. Cool. Ahem. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there, Singapore. You're so small. So what do the Malaysians bring to the table that the others don't? Well, let's find out in the first segment. Q transition. Now this is going to be really fun. I believe it's cube. Malaysia's land has so many unique twists and turns and explaining right. it, it. You know, it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Right, Ken? Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh my God, he's insane. It? I don't know. Did I? You got it. First of all, Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia, divided into two main parts. Peninsular Malaysia, where about 40% of the land, which also has the southernmost tip of mainland Asia, Tanjung Piai. While East Malaysia, or Malaysian Borneo, takes up about 60% of the country's land on the island of Borneo, making it one of the only two islands shared by three nations along with Cyprus. If what the fuck? Cyprus kind of has four, including the UN buffer zone, but you get the point. Just watch the Cyprus episode. Keep in mind, about 80% of the population lives on the peninsula, while only about 20% live on Malaysian. Right. Country. In addition, the country has over 870 islands off its shores, the state of Sabah having the most with nearly 400, the largest one being Bangui Island. However, the island of Sebatik is a little bigger, but the island is split in half with Indonesia in the south. Also, they have a little bit of a dispute with the Philippines in the east. The country is divided into to 13 states and three federal territories, Putrajaya Labuan, with the capital Kuala Lumpur. However, due to overcrowding, almost all the government ministries and administrative offices were moved to Putrajaya in 1999. After Kuala Lumpur, the oh my God. are Georgetown on Penang Island and Ipoh. The busiest airports are Kuala Lumpur International, Kota Kinabalu, and Penang International. Wait, that's a cool After ass airport. After Penang Island and Ipoh, the busiest airport Yo. are Kuala Lumpur International, wait, wait. International, Kota Kinabalu. Yo, what the fuck? Yo, that's cool as shit. And Penang Internationals. Now here's the thing. Malaysia lies under the South China Sea. If you don't know anything about this place, and if you didn't watch the Brunei episode, it basically goes like this. <laughs> basically, every country in this area wants a piece of these things called the Spratly Islands. Today, Malaysia has been right. to about 11 of them, and the most notable one being Layang Layang, which they built an air base on. Now you might notice wait, that wait, 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 of wait, them, wait, and the most notable wait. one being Layang Layang. Wait, what the fuck? It's a water airbase? What the fuck? Which they built an airbase on. Now, you might notice that it's interesting how these two small entities, Singapore and Brunei, got mixed up into this whole region. Well, when it came to Brunei, it kind of went down like this. Welcome to the Malaysia Agreement. Sultans, please sign the paper saying you'd like to be part of Malaysia. Wait, I'd have to give up that? Mm -hmm. and, and I'd have to lose control of what? Oh, hell no. As for Singapore, it was more like, Hey, Malaysia, you just got free from British rule. Let's join up. Makes sense? Yeah, we are now one country. Yeah. You have too many Chinese people, and you're gonna waste my money! Yeah, well, you only get real to the Malay! Uh, you know what? You're out of the club. Yeah, fine. You know, whatever. I quit. One day, this is I'm gonna down. make something of myself! Okay! And boy, howdy, did they keep that promise. Otherwise, some notable places of interest might include places like the largest roundabout in the world, the Petronas oh Tower, my God, that's the tallest it, twin buildings in the world, Kuala Lumpur Tower, the Batu Caves with a Hindu shrine, Ooh. National Monument of Malaysia, Legoland, two caves. Hold on. Ooh. Wait, these are some big ass stairs. What, that goes into this cave? Yo, that looks sick, though. Hindu Shrine, the National Monument of Malaysia, Legoland, Malaysia. Yep, they have one. Sunway Lagoon, the National Mosque of Malaysia, Kek Lok Si Buddhist Temple, these palaces, the old Dutch buildings of Malacca, the Leaning Tower of Taluk Intan, Afamosa Fortress, the Cat Statue of Kuching, this Heritage Museum, Sarawak Cultural Villages, and the Sepilak Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. Yep, orangutans, they have plenty of those in here, which means we can now swing over to the next segment, the... Yeah, I bet it got some crazy fucking... Some Malaysia's land, they Ooh. got kind of lucky because not only is it like rich and beautiful, but unlike their neighbors, you don't really have to deal with any crazy catastrophes. Right. First of all, Malaysia rests comfortably on the bottom of the Eurasian plate, literally shielded on all sides, mostly by Indonesia and the Philippines. This means that if any earthquakes occur, Indonesia usually absorbs all of it. If cyclones and tropical storms attack, the Philippines and Indonesia take the hit. And if a volcano erupts, they don't have to worry because they don't really have any volcanoes. And it's probably happening in Indonesia. Indonesia. 
Now, when it comes to nature, even though the largest lake, the Kenya Reservoir, lies on the West Peninsula of Malaysia side, the Eastern Malaysia Borneo side has all the extremes. They have the highest mountain, Mount Kinabalu, the longest river, the Rajang, and a lot more animals. In fact, Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. They have 14,500 species of flowering plants and trees, over 600 bird species, Holy over shit. species of mammals. Speaking of which, Peninsular Malaysia is home to the oh my god in the world. Insert Wakanda joke, I don't have time. Speaking of that, the national animal is the Malaysian tiger which is also featured on the coat of arms which we will cover in flag friday stay tuned otherwise bro it would be so weird oh my god it'd be so weird living in like a country where like in the wild they have like tigers bears fucking elephants you know what i mean like black panthers like bro orangutans and they even have their own version of tapirs like the ones in south america wow and that creepy looking proboscis monkey Many like for example like if there's anyone in malaysia watching this right now if you got, is it like places where you have to avoid because like there could be tigers and stuff or is it just like in a forest? So like, you know, like you got the Amazon rainforest, people know if you go in there, you might come across some fucking, you know, you're probably not coming out, you know what I mean? But like, uh, is there, is there places like Malaysia where like, you're like, okay, yeah. Or is it like, is the wild card like fenced? Because I thought, right, if I, if I go to like, let's say I go on a holiday to Malaysia, bro, right? And I accidentally go somewhere where fucking tigers are. Like, how would I know? Species you can find in one of the oldest rainforests in the Unless world. Unless it's way from Amazon, populated areas. Nagara. Malaysia is also a land of caves. Wait, what was that? They have the largest chain of Taman Nagara in the world. Old monkey. Many of these species you can find in one of the oldest rainforests in the world. Over three times older than the Amazon. Taman Nagara. Ah, uh, yeah. So they'll mainly be in the in the rainforest. Malaysia is also a land of caves. In fact, they have the largest chamber I love in caves. the world that can be found in Sarawak. Otherwise, Malaysia is known for producing electronics, palm oil, petroleum, gas, and rubber. They're actually the second largest palm oil producer in the world and the largest condom maker. Just saying. They even have their own national car company, Proton, making Malaysia the 11th country Why in the not? world with the capability to fully design and engineer and manufacture cars. Otherwise, some national dishes might include things like nasi kandar, nasi oh. darang, nasi kerabu, chicken perchi, oh. mangosteen and durian, Oh my! That chicken look lemak. good. Oh, and if you have the chance, see if you can witness the famous Tariq tea shows. The servers pour out tea, sometimes over a meter in length. It's almost seen as like an art form. What okay, the fuck? Okay, that's just about it for now. In this segment, uh, let's talk about the coolest part of Malaysia: the Malaysians. <laughs> Just for the record, the word Malay refers to the races that make up Malaysia. Malayan is the geographic term for peoples of West Malaysia on the peninsula right. and not part of Borneo. And Malaysian is the nationality and citizenship. So a uh, Malay person in Singapore is Malay, but not Malaysian. And a citizen of Indian descent living in Kuala Lumpur would be a Malaysian and Malayan, but not Malay. That's so right? pretty. Probably not. First of Those all, the has about 32 million people and is one of the fastest growing nations in Asia. The country is made up of 67% Malay or or Bumiputra indigenous Malay peoples. We'll talk more about that in a bit. About a quarter of the population is Chinese, about 7% are Indians, and the rest are other groups mixed in, including a few other Asian groups and Europeans. They use the Malaysian ringgit as their currency, they use the type G and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, here's the thing. Let's talk politics. Oh! No, we're not getting into an ideological debate. We're just gonna explain the system in which Malaysia's government operates. Proceed. <laughs> Malaysia is one of the few monarchies in the world. However, it's not a monarchy in the conventional sense because they kind of have nine kings. Huh? These nine states each have a royal leader known as a sultan, and every All five right, years okay. they rotate to allow one of the nine sultans to rule as head king, known as the Yangti Petuang Agong. That means that technically, if you were a boy and your dad just finished being king for his five-year term, you could be the next one, but you would have to wait at least 40 years for it to happen. You know, since eight other kings would have to be king before you. Yeah, I know, it's like, oh, what the? There's a lot more that goes into it, but that's kind of like the basic underline. There's it's a, a bit weird, but okay. This. I mean, the closest thing would be maybe the Comoros with that rotating president thing, but it's nowhere near as complex as this. Nonetheless, the royals are held under a constitution that limits their power mostly to cultural and religious affairs, as well as appointing certain leaders, and so on. Most of the government activity is held and controlled by the prime minister and the parliament. Which brings us to the most recent controversy, the 2018 election. This effectively changed everything, as for the first time since 1957, the BN party was voted out, and the new PKR party took over. And it was actually a peaceful transition. We really don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but it's really interesting to look into and talk to a Malaysian person if you want to know more about it. It was right. a huge deal for the country. Anyway, the country has two official recognized languages, Malay and... I'm guessing someone from um, Malaysia is going to comment down below saying uh, what that is about. 
English. They were once a British territory, so it kind this of makes sense. Justin. It's taught from elementary school. Malay is basically intelligible to Indonesian. Both countries can generally understand each other. I explained this a bit in the Indonesia episode. For Malay, the words are easy to read, but the problem is the intonation. For example, the word for slowly, I believe, is perlahan, not perlahan. It's like you just... You have to know how these things work. Nonetheless, about half of the population is mostly fluent in three languages, adding their mother tongue, especially if they're part of the- You know what? Credit to these countries, man. Because, like, <laughs> people in England suck. We, we, honestly, I don't know many English people that can't speak more than just English. You know what I mean? Like, and then I watch all these videos of now, and they just speak multiple languages, and they're actually fluent in them. Like, I would love to speak another language, but I don't know what language I want to speak, but I'd love to learn one. I actually Indian would. Minority groups, and they are allowed to take vernacular schools that teach in these languages, just like Singapore. Which brings to culture. In Malaysia, the population is quite diverse. You have a lot of Chinese, known as the Peranakan Chinese, that have existed there since the 15th century. They have a unique Chinese Malay culture with a touch of European influence. The Indian community is mostly Tamil and Telugu-speaking South Dravidian Indian groups that were brought over during the British colonial years. Then, of course, you have the largest people group, the ethnic Malays, or the Bumiputra, as well as the Orang Asal, whom are like the really indigenous ethnic Malays that make up the majority of the population in East Malaysia on Borneo. Sometimes cool. these two people groups are collectively joined together under the term Malay, although some might disagree. But either way, these two groups kind of steer the direction in terms of what constitutes Malay culture. Oh, and don't even get started on the Bajau people that live on these structures in the middle of the ocean for what? most of their lives, and they've adapted to hold their breath for like 15 minutes underwater. Yeah, those people are cool. Another thing I really what want to the highlight is that live on these direction in terms of what constitutes Malay culture. Oh, and don't even get started on the Bajau people that live on these structures in the middle of the ocean for most Bro, what? Most of their lives and they've adapted to hold their breath for like 15 minutes underwater. Yeah, those people are cool. No Another fucking really way. Is that sometimes Indonesians do kind of accuse Malaysians of stealing their culture because a lot of Malaysians are descended from Sumatra. Faith-wise, Malaysia is also quite diverse. Although the country's official religion is Islam, it's a multi-confessional nation. Buddhists are mostly from the Chinese community, Hindus for the Indians, Christians from all races. Numerous temples, mosques, and shrines and churches are found all over. Malay culture is defined by a number of aspects. For one, the clothing. Remember a couple months ago that guy from Malaysia Kamarul sent me the Malay hat the Tengolok so I forgot to bring this on set when we were filming but I still have the hat and I, I love it and I told you I would wear it in the episode so here I am I'm wearing it in the Malaysia episode thank you so much man I asked some of you guys the Malaysian geography peeps what you would like oh man we was expecting it on you right now man to highlight in terms of Malay culture right now some things you said included things like the performing arts such as Joget dancing and Makyong theater traditional shadow puppetry Silat martial arts Songket weaving the traditional steep roof and sharp buttress architecture, gamelan music. Speaking of which, history time. We don't have enough time to go too far into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic Sultanate, Portuguese came in, Dutch came in, British came in and made the White Raja period, which made things interesting. World War II Japanese came in, British came in again, independence. Okay, very quickly just to cut, this is the part where I totally forgot to mention all the cool stuff that happened in the 60s. It's how they got those two states in Borneo. We'll explain more on Flag slash Fan Friday, so stay tuned. Economic research structuring and industry boom 2018 vote for the new prime minister and here we are today all right some notable people that you guys the malaysian geography suggested that i should mention in this video might include people like siti nuraliza lat the cartoonist sheikh muzaffar shukor p ramli ziavi hang tua enrique of malacca michelle yo tony fernandez air asia owner designer jimmy chu melinda louie singer yuna oh, director shit. james wan dr mahathir mohammed nicole ann david lee chong wei henry golding and the first prime minister tunku Abdul Rahman. I'm sure there's way more famous people I could have mentioned, but we got to move on. Time to go to the last <laughs> part of this episode, the... Now, Malaysia is quite the powerhouse player when it comes to Southeast Asia. They got a good thing going on and they host great parties. Outside of Asia, the EU has good relations, making Malaysia one of the top three trading partners of Southeast Asia. And cool. Specifically, Austria loves exchanging electronics and pharmaceuticals with them. Of course, the UK is still pretty close as a former colony. Much of the cultural residue is still evident to this day. They are one of the Commonwealth of Nations. Many Malaysians live in the UK and most of the white population in Malaysia are of British descent. As a member of the Association of Southeast 
East Asian nations. Of course, they have close ties to their neighbors. Cambodians love Malaysia and visit often, whereas Malaysia is one of the closest and biggest investors of Cambodia. Thailand has a few issues since there are those Malay Patani separatists in the south that keep protesting, whereas the Philippines right. like, hmm, we're really similar ethnically, but you're mostly Muslim and I'm mostly Catholic, but whatever, we both like coffee and fried chicken. <laughs> when it comes to their best friends, however, most You people know what, who doesn't like coffee and fried chicken? Who actually doesn't like coffee and fried chicken? Said Indonesia and Singapore. Singapore may have left the Malaysian Union, but they still kept close ties as a sovereign state. They are quite cooperative in business and even culturally, they are very similar with noticeable Chinese and Indian minority enclaves. Indonesia. Wait, is like hold on. Cooperative in state. They are Asia and Singapore. Singapore may have left the. Singapore. Why is there barely any green in Singapore? Like, what? What is this here? Is it? Like what? What's going on? Is it just rock? Malaysian Union, but they still kept close ties as a sovereign state. They are quite cooperative in business and even culturally, they are very similar with noticeable Chinese and Indian minority enclaves. Indonesia is like the big brother that has a very different political system, but in the end, they cannot deny how alike they are. The biggest difference would be that most Indonesians have a Javanese background, whereas the Malaysians are just Malay, mostly Sumatran, but they talk the same, they eat the same, they enjoy the same hot, humid atmosphere, and they have close relations altogether. In right. conclusion, with sultans, kings, tigers, Panthers, temples, shrines, mosques, and really cool. It's hats. cool. It's no wonder why Malaysia is becoming a hot spot that everyone's talking about today. Stay tuned. The it's cool. Is coming up next. Really, really, really good, interesting video. Learned a lot about Malaysia. Like I said, I didn't really know too much about it. I'm not gonna lie, but now I do. I actually enjoyed that one. Let me know if there's anything important in the comment section. I'll definitely be reading them. Really enjoyed that video. If you guys got any recommendations that you want me to watch, leave them down in the comment section below as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.